There's a common myth that in order to make outsized returns, you need to invest in IPO companies. You need to invest in the next Tesla or the next Netflix at IPO. And the best investor that ever walked this earth, Warren Buffett, in terms of returns made, never invested in IPOs. He simply waited for wonderful companies to go on sale and bought them at undervalued prices and then held them for very long periods of time. Patience plays the biggest role in rule and investing. We're trying to find amazing companies that are on sale and amazing companies just don't go on sale all the time. And so you need to wait for a wonderful company to go on sale. There's this amazing quote and it goes, scoring is the byproduct of practice. And in investing, to score, you need to have two things. You need to have the skills and the mindset. The skills of investing are easy. We build them into the rule and workshop. They're in the toolbox. It's just a formula of how to find a wonderful company. The mindset is the harder piece. You have to be willing to wait for the wonderful company to go on sale. And so the mindset piece is all patience. Patience is one of the most critical things that you have to have as a rule one investor. I'm sure I've said this before and you've probably heard it before, but our investing strategy is simply laziness bordering on sloth. And what we mean by that is we almost always do nothing. Doing nothing is almost always the right answer. People get excited around new IPO companies. They think that you have to invest in an early stage company to make an outsized return. Our view at Rule One is to simply wait for established, wonderful companies that have track records of success to have an event and go on sale by simply following that strategy. You also eliminate the risk of the company not working out. One of the biggest risks of investing in a new company that just IPO'd is typically that company, the only reason they're IPOing is they need cash. And so they're doing an IPO to raise cash to grow their business or expand their business or because they're at a cash crunch. In rule one, we would instead prefer to invest in companies that don't need outside cash to grow their business. They organically are wonderful enough that they just grow with the money they're already making. The regulatory process of taking a company from private to public is a nightmare for a CEO. And so typically, CEOs and founders of companies don't want to pursue that avenue once they learn how hard it is unless they need to. And so a lot of the times IPOs get painted as an amazing thing to retail investors, but really what it is, is it's people with all the knowledge selling their shares to people with none of the knowledge. So at rule one, we do not recommend that you invest in IPO companies unless you are doing so under the understanding that there's a increased risk of losing money. Instead, we would prefer to wait for a wonderful company to go on sale and get in at a great price and then continue to ride that company into the future for five, 10 years. At rule one, we like to see at least seven years of data of financials to know that a company is gonna be wonderful into the future. So that kind of removes most IPOs from the equation. It would be even better if they had over 10 years of data and a recession to see how that company performs during down periods. And you're looking at this thing and saying, okay, I have a great deal of certainty it's gonna be bigger and better in 10 years. Now the problem with that is that if we don't have history on this business, then we've never seen what happens to this company when it goes through hard times, through a recession in particular. There's an old saying that when the tide goes out, you get to see who's been swimming naked. And when we see a company's financials during a recession, all of a sudden you can see the companies that are very weak, actually. They look like they were good, but in a recession, the wheels come off the wagon and, uh, and the companies that are really strong and end up bigger and better after a recession. So we really wanna see a lot of history on this company before we can start thinking, where's it gonna be out in 10 years? 
If you can invest in a company that grew and got bigger and better during a recession, it gives you confidence that, that company could do the same thing in all future recessions. While you're waiting for a company to go on sale, an option that you have as a rule investor, no pun intended, is trading options. 